Hello everyone and welcome to this week's garden tour. If you're new here, my name is Mari and I'm gardening in Queens, New York City. I'm growing mostly vegetables and some flowers and trying to use organic practices. Today we are going to be doing some harvesting with the tour. I have to harvest some peppers, some strawberries, a lot of herbs and some random things here and there that need to be kind of taken care of. It's now the end of June so I want to make sure that I keep planting things to maximize my space and I have to get that done really soon. It's been a busy week again we haven't had a chance to spend much time in the garden but I did make some time to go prune the tomatoes and the plot which is a good thing over here in the backyard everything is looking great so let's get to it I'm actually going to start today on the little patio up there right by my door. I need to really take care of that green stock up there, that vertical planter, and start making it look nice again. So let's take a look real quick on how it looks. There are a few things still growing here. The beans that I've planted a few weeks ago are all starting to look nice and produce some flowers. We have lots of space below there that needs to be planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover some of the chives there's a few things here and there I have to take it out and this onion this one single onion that's in here it's starting to flower so I sent this little flower bud so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one as well we're gonna start here then we're gonna move on to harvest a few things on that beautiful pink planter too and some other things on the containers let's start with that onion this was actually a spring onion that I got at the farmers market and I probably in March or April and decided to throw in here. Wow, it's really oops. Okay, it was really roots are very strong there, but that's kind of cool. So, decent size for not expecting anything. I was expecting to just get green onions, but it was nice to have this little bulb formed. It's gonna go in here for now. We're also gonna use the tops of the onion. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this shies a really good haircut. The flowers have now completely dried out and there's a bunch of little seeds in there. I'm gonna try to collect the seeds as well. But I'm gonna cut this really, really low. So I'm gonna almost to the base. It's kind of shading a lot of that stuff. You see how lemon balm is getting really leggy because it's getting so shaded by that. So I wanna give it some space to grow. It smells wonderful. Here. Since this lemon balm is getting so leggy, I'm also going to kind of give it a haircut to see if I can get it to grow a little bush here. This one came back from last year, same with the shives. So I'm just going to get some for tea. It smells amazing too. I love the smell of lemon everything. Lemon grass, lemon verbena, they are my favorites. So this is all gonna be for tea and for drying. I'm planning to do a really big herb drying this week. It's time to start getting that done. I want to get this basil to see if it grows a little bushier. It's growing a bit too tall. So this is Thai basil. Amazing, one of my favorites. There's a lot more chives on this side too. Gotta get this all out of here. This one's really thick. Look at that, so much. What I'm going to do with some of this, I'm going to dehydrate it and make chive salt. So this is all the chives that I have to process this week. But this plant's gonna keep growing, even though I did this really extreme haircut in here, it's just gonna keep sending some new shoots and giving us some more fresh chives. This lemon verbena here looking very good and very healthy. I'm also gonna give it a haircut. I'm gonna cut some of this basil and maybe a little bit of that one too. See how things are getting super laggy. I'm gonna take out this oregano too. And here we go. We have all of this harvest just from this one green stock. Herbs are a bit sensitive to the heat. They don't like it to be very hot as soon as you harvest them. You want them to either put them direct in water or in a cool place. So I'm going to leave this inside my apartment for now and then we're going to keep going with the tour. Okay, now this green stock has a lot more space. 
and I'm gonna work on replanting lots of these empty pockets through this week some sides of it keep rotating are still looking quite full the cilantro is taking over but I, I will harvest that later lots of empty pockets in the bottom that will be home for new things too oh hey gypsy while I'm up here I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean this planter and take off this radishes you can actually eat radish tops so that's gonna go in the herb basket as well they'll keep it inside so I'm just gonna go ahead now and harvest real quick this time in this basil here and we're gonna move on to take a look at the rest of the garden down there up here I only have a few things growing the peppers here are doing really really good they have lots of little fruit on them all green still these guys are just starting to produce and these tomatoes here, because it's in a small pot, it's not as big as the one downstairs, but it's still looking really good. This is basil that I also need to harvest because it's starting to flower on the top. Let's come down here and take a quick look at the garden before we keep harvesting. So the sun is just starting to come out now. Those green stalks are looking really nice. And these tomatoes here, the orange hat tomatoes, have starting to ripen. This guy here, the leaves are all looking like this, kind of pretty bad disease or bug damage. So I decided to go ahead and cut almost every leaf in this and instantly started ripening some tomatoes. And this guy started ripening some too. I like to harvest them when they're starting to turn yellow so I don't lose them to the squirrels. I'm going to go ahead and harvest those too. But overall in this planter, there's more herbs up here and I'll take the rest of this lavender some more time but I'll leave this time here because it's got a lot and there's this beautiful variegated sage that I'm also going to leave there because I have some in the front yard that I want to harvest and this planter is full of strawberries I didn't have a chance to come here in the last couple days and miss picking them so that's a lot of them now I'm going to go ahead and pick them all before they get too ripen but we are going to be eating tons of strawberries today and nothing else to harvest in the rest of the splinter everything is about the same as last week the beets have been growing a little bit but quite slowly they're still going to stay there a little longer this planter here with the shishitos is full of peppers even though we did harvest them last week for our friends that came over we used them to put in pizza and made some side dishes but now it's full of peppers again so today i'm gonna go ahead and take all of these peppers out to keep encouraging this plant to produce but shishitos are really really prolific they are a great crop to grow in small spaces and they are mild there's only one out of ten that's spicy but to be honest i have never really grown a spicy one they have been just nice and very sweet very tasty peppers so these are going to get harvested too we have some potatoes that are looking really good these peppers i thought last week we had three of them but we actually have four one two three there's another one below here that I didn't see the other day in four, which is cool. Oh, five! Oh my gosh, I'm missing everything. There's another one here. How cool is that? Oops. So there are five bell peppers in this overwintered plant. Okay, here we have the seeds that I have sold last week are all sprouting. I have a video about sowing these seeds if you're curious. I also have taken my sweet potatoes out. I keep forgetting to plant them. I'm leaving it out here so I remember to take care of it because now it's getting too late. I should have really planted this in May, but I got busy and overwhelmed with a lot of other things in the garden and kind of kept forgetting about this, forgetting about this. But I also had done a video on how I started the sweet potatoes lips if you're interested that I'm going to link down below too. There's another basil here that needs to be harvested. It is already starting to form a little bud, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do it with my hands. Take this out so we can encourage it to keep producing back here in the raised beds the sun is starting to come out everything is looking nice again not much difference from last week we have the beautiful straw flowers is still doing really good peppers looking about the same the tomatoes are still growing they have starting to pass the fence over there which is crazy i did get a chance to come around and prune and stake them a little bit more i took out some suckers there also growing a bit out of control and this guy has such a huge look at this cluster of tomatoes goes all the way down there that's pretty awesome 
I might have shown that in the last garden tour, but I'm still pretty amazed about it, so I want to show it again. Flowers, more the zinnias are blooming nicely here. Now I think it's just mostly a wait game to wait for these tomatoes to ripen. They'll keep growing because they're all indeterminate. Just want to see how much more they grow by next week. It's kind of incredible. You have that beautiful sunflower up there and that one is about to open. I hope we can get to see it next week. I think it's a double king sunflower. Kale here could be harvested, but we have ate a lot of kale this week. I'm leaving it there for a little bit longer. There's more kale here too. This one here is very shaded and I think there's some cabbage worms or slugs eating it because it's looking full of holes. Those other two are looking a bit healthier. I moved the puma pepper here because we put it in that little table there to host our friends and I haven't taken down yet because, you know, life gets busy. <laughs> so we moved them in here, uh, down here for a little bit, but we'll go back to get more sun to the other side. Still growing very nicely. There's some pepper setting. And these peas that I was super excited about last week are unfortunately getting some powdered mildew. Look at that. I don't want it to spread and spreads by air, even though there is a lot of new peas setting in here, which is amazing. There's a lot of new peas that I can harvest. I want to go ahead and take down this plant because there's more here, more here. Because the squash is also very susceptible for powdery mildew, and I don't want them to get in here. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut down this pea vine and that will be the end of the peas for us. So the squash here that last week I said it was not setting many flowers, only had one here. It now has a little zucchini, tried to hand pollinate and just dropped its blossom and started to swell. So hopefully we'll be able to harvest the zucchini soon, but it looks like someone already tried to get it. I don't know if it was a squirrel or a bird, but there's a little blemish in here which doesn't make me very happy, but hopefully we can get before them. There's another female flower that's about to open and a bunch of male flowers that if they open tomorrow, I will hand pollinate them. This one here, the lemon squash also has some flowers now, only males. They have opened and already shrunk and died. They're not, there's no females on that one yet. And on this big one here, the tetra squash, we also already have fruit. We had only buds when I filmed the garden tour last week. Now we have lots of flowers. This female flower here has already opened and I also tried to hand pollinate and it's growing quite nicely. So I might harvest this one green to try and see how it goes. Again, if you're new to gardening, squash has male and female flowers. If you're curious to know how to hand pollinate them, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I can film a video showing you how to do it. But for now, let's keep going with the garden tour because I still got a lot of stuff to harvest. The tomatoes here are not looking really good. You can also hand pollinate tomato flowers. They are perfect flowers at college. They have the male and the female inside the one flower, so you can kind of hand pollinate them for just shaking them around. This cucumber here has some flowers. The cucumbers also have male and female, but it looks like someone ate the top of the plant which i'm not very happy about but what can we do so i'll try to address that later and see if i can stick it up the other side at least this tomato here in a pot also doing good this is a paul robinson and lots of new eggplants here i could harvest them if i wanted to but i'm gonna leave them here for a couple more days so i can harvest a few and make a dish out of it Here's the ginger that I planted a little later. Can't remember if I mentioned it on the last garden tour, but sending some new shoots. The ginger that got a little old in my house and started showing some buds on this side, I decided to put it in soil and it's now growing. So let's see how that goes. Now let's get going in the harvest before it gets too hot because I still have to go to the pot and harvest some stuff over there as well. starting to get really hot so I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this inside and we're gonna go take a look at the front yard first just real quick to see the sunflowers and go straight to the plot to see how everything's going there yeah I was planning to actually harvest some sage from there too but 
that one over there is looking very nice and full but I'm gonna wait a couple more days because I already have lots of herbs to process at home if I have time I'll come back here and do it but I'm gonna take care of what I have already harvested but look at that that sunflower over there is looking really really growing really really tall and there's a few sunflowers that are growing just on the ground over there also are the is bad which is crazy they're just volunteers the sunflowers here, the pretty ones from last week, are starting to lose its petals. They kind of have a short life, the sunflowers, I would say. But there's a lot of new ones. Those are just so pretty. And because the sunflowers were in a sunflower mix, I got to the package called Evening Sun from Baker Creek Seed. They all have different ones coming from it. I want to make sure that I am saving the seeds from this one. I'm not sure if it's going to come true to the same color next year. But I'm gonna try it anyway. So some of the heads that have already been spent, I'm gonna wait until the back of it turns yellow and droops a little bit, and that's usually when you can have your seeds. So I'm going to be doing that with this. And the Procut Plum Sunflower, this one, it's F1 hybrid, so we're not supposed to save seeds from it. Usually, if the seeds are viable, they might not even produce a plant that is close to the parent, similar to the parent. So I'm actually going to save that head to eat we are gonna try just to sprout the seeds to eat as sunflower sprouts if we can basically that's how everything is looking here these black ones are starting to open too and they're looking very pretty those are the chocolates and flowers and here there's another one that will open soon i'm not sure what color that one's going to be and these ones i thought they were sunflowers but i'm now thinking they might be sun chokes because they kind of growing super close to each other like that and I did put a couple sun shocks in here last year so in the ground so the, I wonder if that germinated here on this side the marigolds looking like it's going to bloom soon which is cool this little sunflower here might be a chocolate sunflower too because the stems are purple it's not super big but I'm sure it's still going to look pretty and behind there are some zinnias sage that I said I was going to harvest we're gonna go take a walk to the plot now and I'm actually going to be showing you guys a few things on the way I've noticed there are more people are starting gardens here in the block so I've seen some gardens that have some peppers and tomatoes and there's one that's really nice that has peppers, tomatoes, zucchinis and kale I think with broccoli right in the front yard just like this one but very nicely done that's my favorite one so I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you guys too so let's take a walk Okay, here we are in the plot right now I love the way it looks this early in the morning everything is also been looking quite good here finally starting to see a lot of progress from week to week things are starting to grow really really nicely in here over in this little wild corner I did try to get some weeding done this week but there's a volunteer bean in here and I tried to leave the clover that I purposely planted in there but definitely miss this guy over here, gotta pull this out too. There's a few flowers that are planted on the edges and the cosmos is really doing good. It's getting really, really big and setting up lots of flowers already. And this is a very pretty variety. It's a very nice color and I like the, le the way these leaves are shaped. So hopefully it's helps sits in there and keeps coming back year after year. The fig tree, it's wild, it's growing very nicely. There are some figs that I'm thinking they're about to be ready because I see some brown spots on them. So I'm going to talk to my neighbor and see if they want to harvest them before they travel for the summer. But it's producing very well, also looks much healthier than looked last year. It's huge. And right next to it I have some of the flowers on my little experimental bed that I tried to do a few medicinal stuff it's doing better than I thought it would the fever feel is about to bloom which I'm very excited hopefully by next week we'll see some white blooms in there I can also see a bunch of weeds in here those are actually weeds and these are tomatillos they look very similar but the, the leaf feels different on this one 
this is a tomatillo that volunteer you can see the flower there too i had two big tomatillo plants there last year and a bunch of food feral so there's a bunch of volunteers they're looking really good on this side i just had some time to come and stake them this week too and i have more of them here on this flower bed side you can see that they are doing nice over here too that one particularly is doing really good but it's kind of growing too big over my armenian cucumber that i planted here it's growing a bit slow maybe it's competing too much but i try not to plant much things in the front we'll see how we do it actually had a really slow start and i thought it was not going to do well but it seems like it's picking back up now which i'm very happy to see i wanted to try to climb over here and maybe take these bars if it can it is there's another climbing plant that i put in there a squash and i want that to probably take this half so we use everything that we already have available to us here this amaranth right next to it it's getting so big i know that you can top them off or cut them a little bit more to encourage some more branching but i think this looks so beautiful i'm just gonna let it do its thing i love the color that's adding to the garden you can actually eat young amaranth leaves it was a native american crop and they used to eat this from what i just read recently and i had eaten before it's, it's quite good but i just want to kind of leave it in the garden right now doing its thing because it just looks so beautiful the yarrow right next to it it's getting a little bit shaded by it this lemon basil over here i have to harvest but i'm gonna harvest in a minute when i start harvesting the flowers this nasturtium here is starting to look nice and plump there's no pests on this nasturtium they are kind of working as a trap crop, crop in my front yard now but not as much in here the pests are not really coming over it yet and here on this very edge we have this very pretty i really really like this purple red straw flowers some of them open you can see this one here has the yellow center i can't remember if i showed this or not last week but i think they are gorgeous i see some ants in them which could be a little a sign of aphid so i gotta spec them a little closer later and here in this really shady corner now too i have some eggplant that it is trying to starting to pick up which i was surprised by the leaves are looking healthy and maybe it's like in this spot i sold some sunflower seeds in here and they're starting to come up but looking a little leggy this one is not looking good i might thin this one out but hope this one make it because i really don't have any sunflowers at the plot if you guys haven't noticed that yet and that's making me a little sad i'm loving the way the sunflowers are looking this year moving on to this bed here all the flowers are doing good those are zinnias they're starting to come up really nice and bushy and the leaves look healthy i love the way they're kind of coming up together they have some buds so hopefully we'll have some nice flowers here too the calendula here is starting to bloom it's the same variety that i have in my backyard the beautiful orange one more tomatillo there i forgot the name of this but it's a flower too the snapdragons are really really slow here but hopefully i'll get to see some blooms sometime this summer the celosias are doing really good i'm gonna go ahead and probably harvest this too this marigold has something on it it's turning purple and the leaves are curling i just noticed that recently i gotta do some more research to see what's happening here and actually some of my peppers that were curling too seem to be doing good now the top of it's kind of picking back up still has some damage there which makes me think see there's some that it might have been there's some bugs in here now could have been a water issue i read that online that's quite common with peppers and the only curling that was happening in the garden was with peppers even planted in separate spaces so i'm happy to see that it's picking back up and hopefully we have a nice crop for me too even though i think they might be slightly stunted but it's okay oh look at how beautiful this calendula looks here this is a strawberry blonde calendula it's looking very nice now with the sun hopefully all these plants will be full of bloom very soon and i put this cage here because i planted some sunflowers you can see a few that are popping up out there there's not as many it's a bunch of weeds too that i have to come and take it out so the reason why i actually don't have any sunflowers here the plots because they kept getting snipped off by the birds for some reason 
they left some of the other flowers alone but the sunflowers when it got the long stem they just come and snip it in half so i decided to guard it this time so i can have at least a few sunflowers by the end of august or maybe beginning of september at this point i don't know they're all super young i'm happy with all the flowers so it's okay but it feels weird not having any sunflowers in here this year. I still haven't decided what I want to do on that bed over there. I still have that eggplant. I was trying to see if it goes well. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it grew much since I planted. But maybe I'll just leave it there and watch what happens. The squash is coming out really nice now. It had a good amount of growth from last week to this week. And I came around and pruned all the leaves that had some powdery mildew on them. So they're looking quite healthy now. I'm gonna pass it real quick and hopefully we'll start producing soon. This one is not looking healthy. This one, which is a patty plant squash, there's a cute little female flower there. It's very small and I just noticed when I was pruning that it's been kind of eating and snipped in here. So I actually don't remember if I mentioned that I was going to do it. But I'm sorry guys. I don't know if I should just put another plant in here and kind of see if it make it back. It's hard for me to decide on this thing sometimes. This one hasn't produced any flowers yet. I see one coming in there, which is good. I buried it last week and it seems to be doing good. I'm really happy that I don't see any powdery mildew coming back yet. This long squash here is growing nicely. It has starting to grab on the fence that which is what I wanted and look at this I really love the way they go it so perfectly to grab something such cool thing that nature do and here the pepper bed it's been a bit disturbed it looks like here I did plant a new pepper here that I got at the farmers market I went to buy veggies and I couldn't control myself and I got a little pepper seedling this is a Hia Mario pepper when I went to Peru I had a lot of the Ajia Maria sauce with everything in there and it was really really good so I kind of want to try to figure out how to make it. That's why I decided to buy this pepper transplant now and if it goes well I can save seeds to grow again in the future. So we'll see. I never really had the pepper by itself. I just had it made into sauce when I was there. The other peppers here are also clearly stunted so maybe hopefully that new one will make it. I took some of the other ones out a little time ago and to see if I can make some space but it does look like an animal came here and dug around a little bit because it's looking quite disturbed which I don't really like to see I wanted to plant some things along here since the other one I showed last week the mashishi it's gone so I might have to sow some more seeds there but before I go there let's go back to this trellis we have this cucumber here that was also kind of looking a bit damaged and not super healthy with the leaves looking a bit yellow but it looks to be picking back up i like to see it climbing a little bit more now and this dahlia here has a little bud i'm so excited to see this flower it's my first time growing dahlias and i can't wait to see how they're gonna look in the garden the basil here is doing good kale here is doing good and this melon here is not so I might have to sow something else and they grew a little bit from last week but very very slowly this is the Kajari melon that I learned about from Roots and Refuge Farm and here are the peas, the butterfly peas that unfortunately this year are not looking like they're gonna make it either so I might just have to cut them out this other side here is full of flowers which I am going to harvest today because they are kind of getting too big and getting in the way of the other vegetable crop plants that I planted here. So I actually just want to trim them a little bit and take some cut flowers to our apartment. But here we have a little cucumber that is now looking to be picking back up again. Also had a rough start, but it's starting to climb nicely back there. This is a center cut squash from Rose Heaven Seeds. I also think I showed that last week. It is growing nicely. It has grown quite a lot since last week. These flowers here are just looking beautiful. They're totally taking over. But on this side at least I kind of want to make a little bit of space. The corn here is doing really good. Kind of a big difference from last week. Especially these two here in the front. The ones in the back are doing good too. And the beans are starting to climb over this. On both sides I just noticed. That's great. Because I do want to have something climbing over these trailers eventually. For now we just have those two guys that look very shy. Kind of wish those 
beings had volunteered here instead of there because if they were already climbing here that would have already been looking really cool but it's okay now for the tomatoes on this side I actually did come around and prune them quite heavily this week so they don't look like they grew much from last week but it's because I cut a lot of the leaves off they were starting to turn a little yellow with some brown spots so I got scared that could have been blight so I decided to really prune them a bit intensely so they can get a lot more airflow and after that maybe if I see some improvement I'll let them grow a little bit more but they're looking a little bit shy now can't help to think they look quite skinny compared to the ones in my backyard but the fruit's still doing all good and most of these guys on this side are doing really good this one here actually bent this fruit was so heavy this guy here was so heavy that the stem kind of broke I came in the stem was on the ground so I tied it together and put a little support to the pole here because I really don't want to lose these guys but they, they are really really big like they're huge so if they keep growing that's going to be a really nice size fruit but I don't see any more fruit on this tomato plant which is interesting too they all have those two huge ones and there's some flowers but not really tomatoes setting yet the other ones around kind of have some fruit on the top part too which is good the whole time winter now it's this black beauty i'm so excited about it. everywhere that i have black beauty planted it's doing fantastic so it's definitely something that I'll probably keep on the list for years and years to come even though this one that's had the first fruit here it's looking quite weak on the top but has the biggest fruit on the bottom and this has been after it pruned and has been getting more sun back there it has actually turned to almost all black it only has a little spot on the side and it's just looking so good i mean look at this that's just so so pretty i can't wait to harvest it i'm super excited all the other ones are looking quite green other than again black beauty in here being the champ of the garden this year more tomatoes there more tomatoes up here and this guy is producing well too i think this is the ananas noir everywhere it's growing has a nicer cluster of fruit there's another one back there that's wow that has a lot so here's a little okra progress not much different from last week just they set a new little leaf i've already decided which ones i'm going to thin out and the sunflower grew a little bit it's been attacked by slugs looks like here but the birds haven't snipped that one off yet so i am hopeful about that now let's move on to the other side here well Danny did some work with the compost that's why it kind of looks a little different there he took a lot of the kind of looked finished better compost in the bottom and moved it here and he wanted to kind of let it cure and we tried to cover so it would happen a little faster but it gets blown by the wind I got to make sure we keep watering it so it doesn't dry out but we want to see if we can speed up the process of that side a little bit and on this side we're going to keep adding just the new trimmings from the garden the tomatoes here is not doing as good still they're doing okay but not super vigorous as the other side the ones that had blossom and rot last week i don't see any in here this week which is good it was only on that those two i think tomatoes on that plant <laughs> that's plant look how sad poor thing only has one fruit i guess has another tiny one on the side but look how it's just one little stick with the fruit so it's they're struggling this one here too has barely grown so i keep saying that i might take them up but i don't have the heart to do it so maybe you'll see just what's gonna happen through the season we'll see i might change my mind don't hold me accountable for that but back here are the romas which they're determinate kinds and i'm not pruning or doing anything to them they started super super slow compared to their heirlooms which is interesting i thought those guys would be faster that's how not how it worked for us and this adding some fruit but very little and we'll see if we'll keep going well it's doing a bit health looking a little bit healthier than it was last week which is good one thing i keep forgetting to show you guys is this peas in here look at this I, they actually set fruit look how huge they look i'm not gonna eat this anymore also they're touching the ground but this piece that i had a hope that it would have grown here got kind of attacked by animals you can see that a lot of them are kind of damaged here very early in the season i didn't even have any of the warm weather crops in here what i planted them this was in the very early in the year in the beginning when i tried to plant some broccoli and cauliflower 
and kale and all the brassicas in here and it didn't work out. I transplanted them out here, we had a cold front right after and everybody was kind of stunted. Now I think also it's because of the cardboard, I don't know, but that didn't work out. And these peas are from that era and I left them in here because, you know, I thought they were just kind of shrivel and die, but they didn't. They kept growing, now they have this huge pea pods. Even though they got so damaged and so many things happened and they hardly grew, they still set a bunch of fruit. So plants really do just want to reproduce and pass its genes on. But I feel bad for it. It definitely struggled a lot while being there. This bed here is actually kind of looking cute. I really like the way that the front looks with these three kills and this beautiful calendula that's now also full of bees. They are growing really nicely. You can see with my hand here that those leaves are quite big. The bean here look like it's come it's picking back up. It has a little bit of bug damage. I don't know if this is spider mice. Some stuff in the back that might be sea aphids that makes it look a little discolored in the front. But hopefully it picks back up. I see some buds in there. This is a dragon tongue bean. It would be exciting if it did. Eggplants again. Little but full of flowers. That eggplant is kind of looking good. It's in the shade of the borscht but it is setting some nice healthy new growth. Same with that one. So now I'm hopeful. Now we might get some Japanese eggplants from here too. Now right, we're back now to the corn and that's kind of it for today on this side. Oh, before I forget the potatoes here, they're kind of looking like they're starting to die back and it's also hot so they're a little bit dehydrated but these guys here are even turning yellow and this one too so maybe we will be time for us to harvest and figure out if it worked or not to grow potatoes in these buckets i was feel a little nervous when i harvest potatoes because i don't know if we'll have anything <laughs> in there or not hey guys it's actually much later in the day and i'm actually back home I was just editing this video and I noticed that it was getting a bit too long. The reason why I'm not ending there at the plot is because I, after I filmed those potatoes, I had also harvested the flowers at the plot. So I'm actually going to cut that into another video and show you guys a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna end this garden tour here. If you're curious to see how the garden was looking last week, I'm going to link a video right up here that you can watch last week's garden tour. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.